everyone and welcome to today's Facebook Live. Um, so I've just come on a couple of minutes early so that people can come on and watch. Now last weekend, last weekend, last week when I came on a little bit early, um, I was asking you all where you were watching this Facebook Live from. Um, and I've been thinking during this week what I want to know about the virtual Benedetti Sessions participants. And I thought, oh, you could tell me your favourite composer, you could tell me your favourite piece of music, something, um, you know, a, a piece that you've really connected with. And then I thought, actually, all I want to know is what is your favourite food? So whilst we're waiting for everybody to join, tell me in the chat, what is your favourite food? I'm just, yeah, I, I'm a big foodie. I like talking about food. Um, my favourite food, to be honest, is um, anything that my mum cooks. She is the most amazing, amazing cook. And it's probably uh, her paella, her paella, um, or, I don't know, her tortilla. Spanish omelette. I love that. So tell me, what is your favourite food? Oh, somebody did my warm-up this morning. That's amazing. Oh, lasagna and chocolate. <laughs> I knew I had kindred spirits with the participants. Lasagna and chocolate, two of the best foods. So just whilst we're waiting for everybody to come on, I want you to let me know what is your favourite food. We've got someone watching from Australia, Mexican, Italian or sushi. Oh, I've not had sushi in so long. As soon as lockdown is over, that is what I'm gonna do. So if you're just joining the Facebook Live, hello everyone, we're sharing what our favorite food is, um, just as we wait whilst people join. Favorite fo food is Haribo's, that's from Kitty. <laughs> Which Haribo's, Kitty? Because there's so many. My favorite Haribo's are definitely the Tang Plastics. Um, chicken tikka masala from Diane, amazing. Um, sausages from Zoe, age seven. Indian food, mm, all Asian food, yep. Cheese steaks from Liam De Rosa. I don't know, what, like cheese on a steak. I'm so sorry if I'm being really stupid. I don't know, I don't know. Chocolate, yes, Phil, I absolutely agree. <laughs> absolutely. Um, oh yeah, Christmas dinner. You know, for Christmas dinner last year, I had um, paella, we had a paella. We didn't have the normal. From Liam being an American, I love cheesesteaks, yeah. But I don't know what they are. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> girl after my own heart, food, yep. That's exactly it. So for anyone who's joining, this is the Benedetti Sessions Facebook Live, but we're just sharing our favorite food to get us started off. We've had everything from sushi to roast potatoes to cheese steaks to some paella, spaghetti, sweet and sour chicken. Oh, thankfully, it's lunch after this for me. Anyway, let's get started with today's Benedetti Sessions Facebook Live. It's so lovely to have you all here. My name is Lucy and I'm one of the general musicianship uh, tutors at the Benedetti Foundation. And before we hop into today's creative tutorial all about Paganini, and we're going to get to know Paganini a bit better, because I think if you know about the composer of the music that you play or the music that you listen to, I think you can get so much more because your imagination has so much more food to kind of, food, <laughs> I'm so food orientated. It has so much more kind of energy to think about other things. I'm getting distracted by all this salmon and pizza. Oof. Um, now, before we jump into today's session, I do want to let you know that every day this week, there is a creative tutorial at midday. Yesterday, same as last week, we had Richard doing um, a creative tutorial for us. Again, all about improvisation. It was just so, so brilliant. And there was this one bit where he just turned on some music and then was jamming along on his piano and it was just excellent. So do check that out. Then tomorrow is Wellbeing Wednesday with Elena. Did anybody else do the yoga session that she did last week? Oh, I just absolutely loved it. And then Thursday is a creative se session with uh, Robin. 
all about the Vaughan Williams Fantasia on the theme of Thomas Tallis. And then Friday, you're in for a treat. You get to meet our star percussionist, Elsa, and she's going to be leading you through a creative tutorial on Paganini again, but this time with a percussion focus. So today we are going to be doing a warm up. I'm going to teach you another song and then I've invented, why well, it's not really a game that I've invented, but we're going to do Paganini True or False. And I've even done a bit of a theme tune, but it's nowhere near as impressive a theme tune as the Ask the Tutors videos on YouTube. Now, um, just before we get started, there's one more thing I want to say, and that is to do with the creative responses. So if you're um, wanting to submit your creative responses, you will have all the information tonight. Emails are going to get sent out. Don't worry, you've not been left behind. Everybody will get who's a registered participant at the Benedetti sessions will get sent an email with all the information about how to submit your creative responses. Now don't worry if you're not a registered participant of the virtual Benedetti sessions because just by using the hashtag Benedetti sessions on social media we can see everything that you're up to and can I just say on behalf of all the tutors thank you so much for everything so far just all the creative responses just make us smile endlessly someone's just gone roller coaster that's from hip-hop warm-up on the YouTube playlist on Nikki's channel go check it out so to warm up everybody can you all sit up or stand up nice and straight and then we're just going to start with some shoulder rolls. This is how we started last week. It's just nice to get our bodies moving. Hello, everyone. So lovely to see you all joining. Uh, yeah, Janie said, I'm so hungry. I am too. Maybe that was a bit of a mistake to get everyone to tell me their favorite food. <laughs> and then hold your shoulders up to your ears. And then down. And then up to your ears again even higher and down and once more hold your shoulders up to your ears it's just so lovely to warm up the body and then down this time i want you to stretch your hands up high you can see my light there but stretch your hands up high stretch them even higher and i want you to think about when was the last time you thought about your armpits think about your armpits stretching as high as you can. Fantastic, everyone. And then bringing your arms down. Once more, thinking about your armpits. What did you do on the Facebook Live at the Benedetti Sessions? We thought about our armpits. <laughs> Excellent. Think about those armpit stretching. And down. Absolutely fantastic, everyone. And this time, massage your face really massage it, make sure that there's no tension, no tension. Maybe take it down to your neck as well, the back of your neck, just giving yourself a little massage. And then we did this last week as well. We did some raindrops on our head. If you're anything like me, sometimes you might be a bit frown, frown orientated, but just putting some raindrops on your head is a lovely way to just make sure that you're not frowning and all over your head as well and bring down the raindrops to your shoulders fantastic and again the back of your neck absolutely amazing so this time i'm going to do some call and response um i'm going to do a pattern for you and you respond here we go Ha, 
Fantastic, everyone. Give yourself a big round of applause. And next up, we're gonna learn one of my favorite songs, Bella Mama. And this song is on the general musicianship warm-up playlist on Nikki's channel. It's one of my favorite songs. I think I learned it maybe about 10 years ago. And it's one of my favorite warm-up songs because it's super easy, but also I just find it really satisfying to sing. And I think that if you are wanting to be a musician or if you are, um, yeah, if you do play music or if you do listen to music, singing is such a brilliant way to feel community and feel connected. So that's why we're gonna start off with Bella Mama before I tell you a bit more about the creative tutorials. So, can everybody hold their hands here? I'm gonna sing it for you once through. If you know it, sing along with me. If you don't, follow my hands and tell me afterwards, what are my hands showing you? Here we go, everyone. Bella mama, bella mama, yeah, two, three, four. Bella mama, bella mama, yeah, two, three, four. Bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, yeah. Let's do that again. Follow with your hands. Bella mama, bella mama, yeah. Bella mama, bella mama, yeah. Two, three, four. Bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Now, what was I showing with my hands? What was I showing? Yes, someone said it. Yun Chen, the hands follow the pitch. Absolutely fantastic. So not only is singing really good for our mental health and just for feeling good, but it can also connect our ears with the kind of the pitch of things. And it's, it's actually just such a skill. I mean, you take it for granted, but it's such a skill to be able to say that Bella Mama, be, that that's higher than that. You know, that's actually like quite an advanced musical thing to do. Um, so, this time we're gonna sing it. We did this last week as well. You sang it as quietly as possible. And we're gonna do that again. The words are Bella Mama. Good luck everyone, here we go. I don't want one, two, three, four. Bella Mama, Bella Mama, yeah. Bella mama, bella mama, Fantastic. Give yourself a round of applause. Now we're going to sing it again, but we're going to be inspired by our composer, Paganini. And Paganini, like lots of musicians, like lots of composers, was very complex, like lots of us as well. Very complex character. But I think it's fair to say that he was very confident in his own voice. And Caprice number 24, he just is so confident in all these new techniques and the way that he explores his violin or the way that he explored his violin. So this time I want us to channel a really confident musician or confident composer or a confident person and we're gonna sing Bella Mama as loudly as we can. Here we go and a one, two, three, let's go! Bella Mama, Bella Mama, yeah! As confident as you can. Bella Mama, Bella Mama, yeah! Two, three, four. Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, yeah! Absolutely amazing, everyone. So good. So that's our Bella Mama. Now, if you haven't checked out the warm-up 
uh, playlists on Nikki's YouTube channel. Absolutely do. Bella Mama, you can also sing as Around. Around is very simply a song that you can have two groups singing it, but each at slightly different times. In the UK, a couple of famous rounds are Frere Jacques, with French words, and um, the London's Burning as well. So go check out the warm-up video because we can sing it in four parts and let us know that you are doing it as well. So let's move on to creative tutorials. As I said, all the information regarding submitting your creative tutorials will be emailed to you tonight. Um, if you're not a registered participant, don't worry. If you use the hashtag Benedetti Sessions, we can see what you're up to. But on YouTube, there's a couple of creative tutorials that I've done for ways of exploring the music without playing. It's really important that we get as creative as we can with our own voices, get as confident and as just take up space with your own musical voice and your own musical ideas. And something that can help us do this is to have a bit of knowledge about the piece of music that we're playing or the composer. So, it's time for Paganini, truth, true or false. So I'm going to say a statement. If you think it's true or false, please say it to your screen. I will do my very best to hear you. Um, or you can write it on the chat as well. So let's play Paganini true or false and let's get to know our composer a little bit better. So the first thing is, is this true or false? The first instrument that Paganini learned was the mandolin. True or false? What do you think? Tell me on the chat or say it to your screen. The first instrument that Paganini learned was the mandolin. Let me know on the chats. He also played the viola, the guitar. He played so many instruments, so many instruments. Is it true or false? True or false, did he play was the first instrument that he played, the mandolin. Oh, so from Karina, we have true. From Fiona, we have true. Bethan, we have true. This is so good. From Maya, we have true. And from Kate, we have true. You, if you said true, you are in fact right. The first instrument that Paganini learned was the mandolin. And he learnt this when he was five. He took up the violin when he was seven. And um, by the age of 15, he was going on tours, but just within his country. From a very early age, he was, it was very obvious that he was extremely gifted, which is quite remarkable considering, you know, there, there weren't any violinists in the family. His dad played the mandolin, but kind of just on the side. Um, so yeah, getting to know Paganini. Second thing, true or false? Paganini started touring the world when he was 21. Paganini started touring the world when he was 21. Is that true or is that false? <laughs> James, true maybe. What do you think? Is that true or is that false? He started touring the world when he was 21. What do you think? Now he was so incredibly famous and it's partly down to the fact that he toured, but when did he start touring? Eleanor says true, Charlotte says true, Alex says true, Grant says true. Let's have one more. Eleanor also says true. He didn't start touring the world when he was 21. He actually started touring the world when he was 46. Can you believe that? So when he was 46, he left home for four years and toured to over 40 different countries. Can you imagine? And it's not like you or I travel. It's not like hopping on an easy jet or Ryanair or whatever your local airline is. 
he would have had to sail and get trains. It would have taken absolutely ages. So he started touring when he was 46. Let's have another one. Now, when he was on tour, Paganini didn't really take good care of himself. Um, in the creative tutorial, I mentioned this saying, uh, play hard and work hard. And although he absolutely definitely did work extremely hard, he was also known for loving a bit of a party. So he didn't take good care of himself. He didn't eat the right foods. So much so that when he arrived in Paris, he had to get a kidney removed. Is that true? Or is that false? That when he arrived in Paris, he had to get a kidney removed. Is that true? Or is that false? Let me know. From Duncan, we have false. Anybody else want to tell me? I know 46 is pretty late to start touring. I'm just reading the, the comments. Um, anybody tell me? Is that true or is that false? Let me know. Somebody says true, Tamara says true. Yun Chen says true. Phil, you think it's true that he got a kidney removed when he arrived in Paris? Maya, you also think it's true. Fiona, you think it's true. It's in fact false. He didn't get his kidney removed. It's true that he was like very malnourished, but he didn't get his kidney removed. He in fact got all of his teeth removed. Now, I don't know what teeth removal was like in the 1800s, the early 1800s, but I'm imagining it wasn't great. And he had to get all of his teeth removed because he just wasn't very good at looking after himself. So let's do another true or false. Is this true or is this false? When Paganini arrived in new cities when he was on tour, he didn't like to practice by himself. Instead, he liked to find uh, local but brilliant chamber musicians. So those that played in duos and trios and quartets. He liked to find them to play Beethoven's string quartets and that's how he did his practice. Is that true or is that false? that he did his practice with local chamber musicians playing Beethoven's string quartets. Is that true or is that false? Let me know, let me know. And Lara's joining us as well. So yeah, these are just some anecdotes so that we get to know Paganini even better. So is that true? Oh, Yun Chen thinks it's true. Um, Liam thinks it's true. I love you that you think what I'm saying is always true. I must have a very trustworthy face. Um, Jessica thinks it's true. Fiona thinks it's true. It is indeed true. Paganini practiced and practiced and practiced. You can't get to his level of rock stardom without practicing but he didn't particularly like practicing by himself and he was such a fan of Beethoven he just absolutely loved Beethoven so when he arrived in new cities he would find the best musicians and play through the string quartets because he thought that that ticked all of his practice boxes let's move on when Paganini was on tour he and Robin, um, the cellist who's going to be doing the Facebook Live, he was telling me some of these anecdotes. And he said something like over the four years he was on tour, he earned like 300 gold bars or something. Like he earned a phenomenal amount of money. But back in the day, in the 1800s, you had to pay for your own venue costs and hall hire and usher costs. And is it true that when he played in London at Drury Lane, on the day of his performance, he even had to buy candles? He even had to buy candles. Is that true or is that false? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know, is it true? <laughs> 
that Paganini, on the day of his performance in London, he was busy buying candles. Let me know what you think. Kate saying that she's got them all right so far. Let me know. So we're just getting to know Paganini a little bit better. He is our composer of Caprice number no. 24, rock star violinist. We're just getting to know him a little bit better. Karina says true. Liam says true. Yeah, Fiona, I agree. Everything must have been so expensive. Emmeline says true. Yan Chen thinks it's true. And shout at your screen right now. Is it true or is it false? Was he bu busy buying candles? It was, in fact, true. Can you imagine, just before uh, an exam or just before you have to perform in front of somebody or just before this recital that you've been working really hard towards, you're busy buying candles. Whew, how times have changed. I wonder if Nikki's ever been busy buying candles before one of her recitals. I imagine not. Okay, we have two more, true or false. So after hearing Berlioz's piece, Harold on Italy, that was the worst pronunciation ever, Harold on Italy by Berlioz, after hearing this piece, Paganini was so overcome with emotion that he climbed up onto the stage, knelt down at Berlioz and kissed his hand. Is that true? <laughs> Nikki's commenting with a candle. Is that true? Did he climb onto stage after hearing this piece of music by Berlioz and kiss his hand? Diane says that everything sounds true when I say it. I told you it's the, it's the trustworthy face, what can I say? So is it true or is it false? Did he climb onto stage? We have someone saying false, Yon Chen says false. Um, we have somebody saying true. Liam says probably true. And it is indeed true. After hearing this performance of Harold on Italy, Paganini climbed the stage, knelt at Berlioz's feet, who, and he was another composer, and kissed his hand because Paganini just thought it was the most beautiful piece of music ever. And the interesting thing about this is five years previously, Paganini and Berlioz had actually been working together on this exact piece. But Paganini played it through and he said to Berlioz, no, don't wanna play this. It's such a boring piece of music. Um, and walked out of the project, didn't want to be involved. And then when he heard it played five years later, he was so overcome with emotion because he thought it was the most beautiful piece ever. And I think this gives us a really good insight into the character of Paganini. Like everyone kind of refers to him as just being so incredibly technically proficient on the violin. But he loved composers, contemporary compo composers of his time. He loved being inspired by them. And he wasn't afraid to change his opinions, which is so important. He was so confident in his voice that he was happy to admit when he was wrong. Now the last thing, so the piece of music that we're looking at at the virtual Benedetti sessions is Caprice number 24 and it's the last of 24 um, pieces of music that really changed the way that people played the violin. Technically they were so different to anything that anyone had seen before. Now with that in mind, Paganini is this true or is this false? Paganini decided to dedicate Caprice number 24 to his favorite teacher. Is that true or is that false? Caprice number 24 is dedicated to Paganini's favorite teacher. True or false? Neve is saying true. Anybody else? Let me know. Who was Caprice number 24 dedicated to? Was it true that it's dedicated to his favorite teacher? Let me know. We've had somebody saying true. We've got someone saying false. Jessica's saying false. 
Melda saying music is life. I agree. Fiona saying true. Fantastic. Let's have one more. Amaya saying true. It is in fact false. And this is probably my favorite Paganini anecdote that we have. He dedicated Caprice number no. 24, one of the most difficult pieces on the violin, to, drum roll please, himself. He dedicated his own composition to himself. Now, there are so many ways that you can get involved with uh, Paganini's Caprice Number no. 24 at the Benedetti Foundation during these virtual sessions. You can be playing it. The Ayub, the brilliant Ayub sisters have done a fantastic set of um, variations and arrangements. Um, you can take part in the creative tutorials or you can let people know about this Facebook Live and there's other Facebook Lives this week. But we just wanted to let you know a little bit more about the composers to give you some context when you're playing, when you're listening, when you're doing your creative tutorials. And why not find out some more about Paganini? Because there's quite a few interesting <laughs> anecdotes that might be more suitable for the parents and the carers, but I'll leave that with you. From all of us at the Benedetti Foundation, thank you so much for joining in with these virtual Benedetti sessions. Do let us know that you're getting involved by using the hashtag Benedetti sessions. My name is Lucy. Thank you so much for joining me. Keep happy, keep safe, and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye everyone. Take care.